Hi guys, back with question 8 from the teacher set of Secure Specimen Materials. This is a paper 1 question for those of you sitting the exam tomorrow. Best of luck, I hope this helps you. Question 8 is a data analysis question. We've got some isolated protease from a bacterium. Um, and this guy has measured the effect of temperature on the rate of hydrolysis of a protein by this protease. So basically he's looking at how quickly does this enzyme break down some protein. And what he's done is he's measured the mass of protein that was broken down or hydrolyzed in five minutes. And we have to take his results and produce some processed results from them. So he's measured how much protein was hydrolyzed. And this is in a five minute period. We're going to make it into a more of a standard um, rate here. So we're going to measure it in grams per minute. So grams minutes to the minus one. And all we've got to do is literally divide these numbers by five. Nice and straightforward. So let's smash through those nice and quickly. 0.48 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.096. 1.11 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.222. Uh, 1.23 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.246. Good Lord, this is tedious. 1.05 divided by 5 divided by it is 0 0.210. Uh, 0 0.78 divided by 5 gives us 0... Uh, 0 0.156 and finally 0 0.12 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.024 and that is our process results. What it now wants us to do is stick them on a graph. So to save time, I've already chosen the scale. It's actually quite nice. I've gone up in tens across the, uh, the x-axis for our independent variable temperature and then I've gone up in 0 0.05s for our dependent variable, that's our rate of hydrolysis that we've just calculated. And I've plotted all of these points uh, on here nice and accurately for you guys. Now, what we should do next is join the dots. Um, you should do this with a ruler. I don't have one to hand for my iPad, uh, but nevertheless, I hope you will forgive me, and I hope AQA will forgive me as well. I'm going to do this freehand. It's not going to be great, but hey. So join the dots nice and straight. Uh, but the one thing we cannot do is extrapolate beyond the data that we've given, we've been given. So we don't know what happens below five degrees, we don't know what happens above 45 degrees. So we have to just end our line graph there. The next thing we need to do, however, is decide that this student, he's he's decided that this bacteria must live at 15 degrees C. Um, and we're asked, do the data support that or not? And we have to give reasons. The first thing I'm gonna say is, we're looking at this, this protease in isolation. We don't know how it behaves inside the bacterium itself. So we're going to say, maybe not. No, possibly, uh, because the, the bacterium, or sorry, rather the protease, the protease data is from isolated enzyme. So it might behave differently inside the cell. Isolate enzyme. However, we do have some positives, you know? So yes, it might be all right, because you would expect the bacteria to live at a temperature or to exist in conditions uh, that's very similar to the optimum rate of the enzyme. Uh, a temperature optimum for enzymes for enzymes, so look, uh, for enzymes, and in this case, according to the data we have, 15 degrees C is the maximum rate. However, we don't know where the peak truly is. We don't know if this continues up to here, we don't know if it peaks here and goes down, we're just not sure. So what we need to do is we need further data um, at smaller intervals of temperature between 10 and 20 degrees C. So we need more data for 10 to 20 degrees C to be able to make sure, because the optimum might be at 12, it might be at 16.2, we just don't know, we need more data to do it. And if if in doubt with one of these um, data questions, look at how much, how many data points they have. Is it enough? Are the intervals small enough to make an informed decision? You can always do more experiments. You can always change up your intervals. So always bear that in mind. What else do we need to have here? Uh, two variables that could mess with the experiment. So obviously when you think of enzymes, you all are going to be thinking pH. 
because pH messes with enzymes. Um, and the other thing you could mention would, of course, be maybe the concentration of the enzyme or the concentration of the substrate. So we could go for concentration of enzyme. Let's go for substrate, actually. Um, or enzyme, and that'll get us our marks. So this is the end of this question. Uh, I think we've got one more to go to bash through nice and quickly, and then we are done.